evening, everybody. Tonight is Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of Marquette Township Board. And if you join us for the pledge, we'd appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> you can do it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you. And we have microphones on and cell phones off, please, or silenced. Right. Randy, roll call, please. Trustee LaRue. Here. Trustee Winslow. Present. Trustee Everson. Here. Trustee Marks. Present. Treasurer Johnson. Here. Clerk Retire is here and Supervisor Durant. Here. Staff present is Manager Kangas, our legal counsel, Roger Zappa is here. Superintendent of Public Works is on Zoom with us. Lenny Bordinas and committee members present as we have Tom Bronkin and Paul Mar Morin, Marin? Morin. <coughs> Morin from our library township advisory council for the township. So that's, what, that's who we have here this evening. And I forgot to say this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Marquette Township Board. And we started at 6.31 p.m. So is there, do we have any public emails? We do not. Okay, any public comment other than presentations and stuff? Okay, and that takes care of those. So I need approval or a motion to approve the consent agenda, which tonight consists of approval of regular and closed session meeting minutes of September 7th, 2021. Bills payable in the amount of $176,547.53. Uh, sheriff's activity report from August. And correspondence not requiring board action is the Marquette County Solid Waste Management Authority draft minutes of August 18th. And if you happen to look at their financial page on the recycling, you'll see that 76% of their costs year to date are payroll. And we're getting a notice that their payroll costs are going up next year. So recycling is not cheap. Uh, we also have the August financial statement, and I just need a motion to approve it unless somebody wants to pull something out. Move to approve the consent agenda. Support. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And I need approval to, of the rest of the agenda unless there are some changes. I move to accept the regular agenda as presented. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And I'm not aware of any conflicts of interest tonight with this agenda. So first up, we have a library presentation by Director Ingmeyer. Thank you so much for coming. I believe she's going to speak as well as a little visual. Yes. OK, I'll get this going for Andrea here. I'm just using the arrows, right? Yep, you're just using the arrows. And let me move this over to the way for you here. OK. All right. Well, hi, everyone. I'm really glad to be here in person. It's really nice to go to meetings actually in person instead of by Zoom, um, kind of like a little treat. <clears throat> so I'm here tonight just to give a little update on what's been happening at the library, what we're doing now, um, and what you can expect to see in the next um, few months and maybe year. Um, so a little bit about the library structure. We have a, a pretty diverse team that we work with um, to make everything happen, and you all are part of that team. Um, we really appreciate all of your support. Um, this duo, dynamic duo over here is a great representative um, of the township, and we're really um, pleased to have both of these gentlemen on the Township Advisory Council. Um, they have already brought a lot of good ideas to us and ways that we can better provide you all with information, and we hope that that's working for you. Um, if at any time you don't have the information that you want or you would like to see something new, feel free to either contact one of these two fellas or myself, and we'd be happy to provide you with whatever is um, desired. 
Um, so a little overview about the library itself. We, ha we were established in 1871 um, with an act of Michigan legislation. It's fine, Randy. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing important along the bottom. Um, and we are a part of the city charter. We have uh, two millages with the, the city of Marquette. One is an operating millage at 1.5 mil and one is a 0.5 bond, mil bond. Uh, we have service contracts with five townships, Chocolay, Marquette, Sands, Scandia, and West Branch. Those are one mill um, service contracts, and they're voted on every two to four years, depending on uh, the pleasure of the board. So this is a little uh, list of all of our current uh, boards. The, um, the Library Board of Trustees is uh, actually a very new board. We have three new board members um, that are serving on the Library Board. Um, and then our Township Advisory Council. We have a lot of new members on the Township Advisory Council too. So um, we'll talk a little bit about what happened with staffing during COVID, but we saw the same thing with our boards. We had a lot of turnover. Um, and we do have kind of a superstar team going right now with our Township Advisory Council. We have a lot of new faces and they're really interested in working with both the, the Township Boards and the Library to make sure the <coughs> communication lines are really open. So we're, we're excited about that. Um, we have about 38 staff members at any given time. We're a few short right now, um, and we are working to fill those positions. Um, but we do have six departments, and um, we're a little short right now in maintenance, which I'm sure will be surprising for you all to hear. Those positions are really hard to fill right now. Um, and also with our library page. So we're hoping to have those filled here in the next month or so. We have a great group of volunteers that we work with. Um, our friends of the library, we have a friends sale, the first sale since March of 2020, coming up this week. Starts on Thursday, runs through Saturday. We're partnering with the AAUW this year. Um, usually our sales are a couple weeks apart. We decided this year to just put them together on the same week, and we're calling it the Front Street Book Fair. So um, there will be a sale both at the Presbyterian Church and at the library starting on Thursday night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, there's also some events taking, taking place with Snowbound. Um, and the sign house and landmark are also involved. So we're real excited to see how this larger event goes. Um, the Friends of the Library are on track to donate to the library over $20,000 from their fundraising this year. And that's primarily just from the store, the store that they operate in the building. Um, so this book sale will, it, usually it does really well. So we're hoping that they make a lot of money so they can continue to support it, library, fund, um, library programs. Uh, the mural in the background of this picture is one of the things that they uh, they paid for this year, and that's down in our youth services department. The artist is on the right of the picture there. Um, and it's just a really beautiful um, mural. We're really excited to have it downstairs. And the kids really, really enjoy going in and looking at all the fish and the, fly and the, the birds flying, and they pick out different pieces um, of this mural. It's really a nice addition to our youth services department. Our master gardeners are on site almost every week, um, either adding flowers, weeding, watering, just doing all the things that, takes, that it takes to keep the grounds looking nice. Um, and this group of ladies are really enthusiastic group of master gardeners that come um, and take care of our grounds at the library. The sister, or the Marquette Area Sister Cities Partnership, we house all of the, um, not all, but many of the gifts that have been given between the two communities um, and, and um, Finland and in Japan. And we house those, um, those gifts at the library. The Sister Cities Partnership comes in and rotates those for us and they take care of the, the displays that are on site to make sure that they always look nice. Um, and then a fairly recent one is the Queen City Seed Library. So this group of volunteers come in and stock the seed cabinet there and folks can come in and check out seeds, take them home, grow them in ideal situations, also bring back seeds to restock the uh, seed library collection. So it's a great way to encourage people to learn about gardening, learn about what grows well in this region, and um, this group of volunteers are really on, really willing to help um, folks to figure out what works and where they're growing. So it's been a really nice partnership. A little bit about the library in general and what services we offer, our adult services department. Um, 
is generally are mostly housed on the top floor, but part of our collection is also on the main floor. Um, we do a lot of reference assistance, local history and research um, assistance, computer and technical assistance. As you can imagine, during the pandemic, that part was a really big part of what we did because everyone was trying to do everything digitally. Um, so they'd come in with their technology and say, how do I get on Zoom? Here's my thing. Um, so we did a lot of helping people figure out how to manage um, life in a digital situation. Uh, we added quite a few digital resources during the pandemic um, and continue to do programming for adults virtually and we are back doing uh, programming in person again as well. Um, some of the new resources that we've added recently, uh, Canopy, which is streaming movies. We are getting ready to add Hoopla, which is another streaming service that will start October 4th. That one has streaming audiobooks, movies, comic books. Um, seems like I'm missing something else, not real sure. It's quite a big catalog. Oh, music, uh, streaming music. So that resource will be starting with the library on October for, uh, 4th. Um, during the renovation, we did add a local history research room. As we were moving everything um, for putting new carpeting down, we realized we had a lot of things squirreled away in various cabinets, um, things that weren't preserved very well um, for an, an archival perspective. So we started gathering everything and decided that we really needed a room that was climate controlled to handle all these materials. So um, previously we had a computer lab on the top floor and that was turned into our uh, local history research room. So we have all the materials in one place now, they're organized, we're going through and really working on making sure that the most important items are put in archival boxes so that they can be retained for the long term. Um, and we're working on quite a few really fun um, digitization projects that I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, something else that we added uh, during the renovation were these study rooms on the top floor. Um, and right after the renovation was over, they weren't really used very much. And we thought, man, we really kind of missed the mark on these rooms. For some reason, people just don't want to use them. But man, after the pandemic, <laughs> good luck getting a room. Um, because everyone who's working from home still um, and is getting really tired of being at their house all the time is coming to the library to work. So all of our meeting rooms are full. Um, most of the time uh, with people, and, mo and most of it are people who are working remotely. Mm -hmm. Three of them there, Andrew? Three study rooms, yep. Um, the Library Nerds with Words podcast started, um, I think it started in April, and our new programming coordinator has been running this podcast. It's a weekly mm -hmm. podcast right now, um, and it's just kind of an update of what's happening at the library with also book recommendations, because librarians like to talk about books. So it's a fun podcast. If you're interested in checking it out, you can see it on um, Spotify, um, also in Apple's catalog. We're doing more with scanning, copying, and um, we're getting ready to add something called a memory lab at the library. So that's um, a resource where people who have um, slides and VHS tapes and old technologies that they would like to create um, a digital format of can come in with their materials and use the machines that we have on site to digitize those so that they have a longer lifespan. Um, so we're really excited about that project. That's another project funded by our friends of the library and it will be added on the top floor of the library, we're hoping by the end of the calendar year. We continue to get materials and physical materials in every week, um, and we are um, getting them all. <laughs> so it's, um, it's interesting, this transition to digital resources um, has meant that basically we're getting one of every format. So it's not less to buy, it's more to buy, because we're continuing to buy all the print resources too, and then adding on the digital resources on top of it. Of course, we have a lot of great views and a lot of people come to the library just for that so they can use the um, study spaces that we have and look out at the lake. Um, our youth services department is a very busy part of our library. Um, we have a very large collection for youth and also do a lot of programming. Of course, uh, summer reading just ended and we had a really good year with summer reading. Our numbers were up a little bit from last year, which is really encouraging considering we have, um, you know, the full gamut of people who are not re ready to come into the library and who are there every day. So we see the, the full gamut of, of folks and their comfort level with coming to the building. 
Um, we're still doing a lot of our, our program kits, which is what we started when everything was kind of on lockdown. So folks could come in um, and get a program to take home with them so they didn't have to be on site to do a program. We are continuing that as well as doing in-person programming. Um, sensory bins are something that we started during the pandemic as well. They're a bin that younger children can get. Um, and they get a different piece added every every couple of months to their sensory bin. Um, and it's been really popular with, um, with preschool age children. Um, virtual story times, of course, during lockdown, everything we did was virtual. Um, we are still continuing virtual story times uh, alongside doing in-person story times. So we're doing, um, we're doing them both right now. Our teen services is in the same position. We really saw teenagers not really interested in doing anything virtually. They just were so burnt out on doing everything virtually that they just didn't want to do anything with the library virtually. So we started doing program kits for the teens as well. Um, we are starting to see more of them come into the building to do programs, so that's encouraging. Um, and we're going to continue to do programs in whatever format that people want us to. So if it's more comfortable for folks to do virtual ones, we're doing some of those. If it's more um, agreeable for folks to do in-person programming, we're doing those as well. So we're trying to meet both needs. Um, we continue to try to bring uh, diversity and inclusion and kindness to the community. This kindness tree was started downstairs in the youth services department and every couple of months we take all the leaves down and we put new leaves up with new things on them, whatever the, the prompt for the, for the month is um, that kids can write. You know, just fun things, things that um, bring joy to their lives and it's been really fun to see that all go up on the wall. This is a new program that was started by the Gippsland Library. They got a grant to make it statewide. Um, and so we are a partner with this program and it's an early literacy program. So young parents can sign up for this program and they can get um, text reminders that just help them uh, come up with ways to engage with their children with regard to literacy. So it'll send them a prompt every couple of days saying, um, today try and, you know, talk about reading while you're doing this thing or giving them an activity to do with their children to encourage literacy. Um, it's a fun little program and we're happy to be a partner. Um, we always like to be partners on big statewide projects like this because it has more um, statewide impact. Some general services. Um, of course, we continue to do all of our in-person uh, circulation services. Um, we're doing a lot of notary and faxing, um, and we do have our art galleries are full again. They, we started filling those in June of this year, um, and we've got some really great artwork that's just coming down this week um, in preparation for the next group coming up um, the beginning of October. We did start curbside pickup during the shutdown. We are continuing to offer curbside pickup. It's not obviously as utilized as it was during shutdown, but we do have a few families that still prefer to pick things up by curbside. Um, so this is a service we'll probably continue um, until it's just not needed anymore. The art print checkout is still going strong. We have a lot of folks who come in and are rotating out the, the art prints on their walls with our collection, and we're always happy to see that. The Library of Things continues to grow. Um, it started with the telescopes that were um, donated by the um, Marquette Astronomical Society. Um, we also have ukuleles, cake pans, we just added Blu-ray players. Um, we've got a few ideas for some new things that we want to add. Every time one of us has to go you know, buy a tool that we're like, man, we use this one time. Hmm, this would make a great library of things. So we, we are collecting ideas from the community as well of things that just might be useful for folks to be able to check out so that they don't have to buy it you know, for once or twice usage. Our meeting rooms are open and are being booked um, quite a lot by both people who are working from home and also groups that are starting to meet again and clubs and organizations who need a space to meet. So we're really happy to see all those folks coming back to the library. Um, this is an exhibit that's coming into our lower, lower level reception gallery in October. It's the Her Story, Her Story uh, Marquette Poet Circle exhibit. And then on the main floor, we will have an exhibit that partners with our Big Read program that I'll talk about here in a minute. 
A little bit about funding. Um, you all are kind of familiar with this, but I'll just review it real quickly. Um, our local millage funding accounts for 77% of our budget. Um, about 47% of that is the city, and about 30% is the township contracts. Um, state and penal fines provide about 7% of our budget, and we generate about 16% of our budget. This is an overview of revenues um, for funding year 1920. Um, and an overview of expenses for the same fiscal year. Obviously, our current fiscal year hasn't ended yet, so as soon as end of September comes, then we'll be able to talk about um, funding year 2021. Our general fund um, is held at the Peter White Public Library. Um, it holds our Carol Paul Trust, which was donated to the library to support music at the library. Um, it is over a million dollars now, and we take a distribution from it every year that doesn't impact the, the um, balance of the fund to be able to support programming. So I have library librarians across the state all the time ask me, how, could, how do you guys get to do all that great music programming? And I say, it's because we have this big fund. Um, we're really grateful to have that kind of money to be able to put into music because it's not something that a lot of libraries can do. Um, our general fund is about half a million right now. And I keep talking about these funds because I, I want to make sure that the community knows we're actively fundraising and trying to build up our, the revenues that we are providing for ourselves. Um, because I think it's really important for, from a sustainability standpoint. Our development fund also has a couple of funds within it. Um, the general fund within the development fund is also about half a million dollars. The Allen Roberts Endowment Fund goes towards youth, so supporting youth and literacy and connecting the library with the youth. Um, that is a big funder for our summer reading program. Um, Holly and Rod Aldridge just started a fund this year um, with the same philosophy but towards technology um, and they have committed to growing this fund um, over the next several years. Um, the Friends of the Library are also a big part of our development fund and then we try to host a few fundraisers every year. Um, of course we haven't done that for the last couple years with our spelling bee. Um, but we are on, tar on target to bring in about $135,000 to our budget this year um, through fundraising. Um, during the shutdown, we upgraded a lot of technology at the library. Um, we took advantage of any grant funds that were out there um, and replaced a lot of computers. We added a Wi-Fi, um, a mega Wi-Fi in the parking lot so that we could broadcast our, wi our a really strong signal out into the parking lot. And we had a lot of people drive to the library so they could sit in the parking lot and use the Wi-Fi. Um, we also replaced a file server and upgraded all of our stations to Windows 10. Um, we also migrated all of our staff to a new email platform, much to their dismay. Um, looking ahead, we've got a couple big projects that we're working on. We will be doing some strategic planning here in the next um, fiscal year. And we also have started a very large digitization project with the Mining Journal. Um, we have a private donor who is interested in seeing this project done. And so we have started um, working on it and we've got uh, one section of the microfilm already digitized um, and on a hard drive and we're waiting on Northern to get the uplink program up off the ground and everything will be available through Northern's uplink and that is also a program that they they got a grant for um, for digitization so we're really excited about that the, having the mining journal digitized is going to be huge for researchers um, and a really exciting thing that starts actually next week is our Big Read. Um, the library was awarded one of the Big Read grants. Um, it's a National Endowment for the Arts grant. We were awarded $20,000. And the, the book that we are um, focusing on is called American Sunrise, and it's poetry by Joy Harjo. Um, she's native. And so we're connecting a lot with the native community um, to bring in programming um, that is you know, focused around native topics. Um, but we have a lot of exciting things coming up. It starts next week, and there's programming all through the month of October and a little bit into November. Um, we're really excited about this. Um, the library's never gotten a big read grant before, and we're one of just a couple libraries in the state this year who were um, awarded this grant, so we're very excited about it. That's all I have. Does anyone have any questions that I can answer? Anything from the board? I've got a couple, Andrea. Sure. Um, the 0.5 mil bond, is that 
for just for your renovations or was that inclusive yeah. of something else or nope that's the renovations from 2017 okay yeah significant it is yep and then in the um i haven't been to the website but i'm wondering if somebody clicks on that tree maybe um can they figure out how that works or their descriptions of how that works so if they want to have their child come in to the library and um like any explanations or anything on any of the the new things that are on there would they be detailed on the website the tree is not on the website um, there were a couple other ones I was thinking uh, that you mentioned uh, and I thought because it's real simple to you you understand it obviously it's mm -hmm. not stuff we're, we're familiar with so I'm thinking the public might not be too mm -hmm. especially if they're not going a lot and they want to go a lot and they don't know I mean even the seed catalog is that kind of is there a picture maybe and then it says bring your seeds in um, take them out you know plant we are to explain it we are trying to put everything on our website <laughs> um, I think probably you all understand how difficult that is to make sure that everything's not only on the website but findable on the website um, but we certainly are trying to do that um, and what we have found is just when we think everything's on the website and it's very clear it's not so certainly if there's something that you don't see on the website please let us know um, but the seed library is on the website um, and we have a lot of information about our programming on the website we did start a new um, events calendar um, during the during the shutdown and so it's been kind of a blessing and a curse it does some things a lot better than our previous system did and some things we're kind of finding it's not as easy as we had hoped um, but you know it's always a give and take okay thanks Lynn Ernie I have a couple of three things sure here. have you ever considered mobile book trucks I've seen that in other communities and I know it's an expense but mm -hmm. I also see the benefits for some of these communities that have gotten in that too so yeah a, like a bookmobile yes mm -hmm. it's on my it's on my wish list <laughs> yeah I I would really love to see us get a bookmobile I've seen how it worked with my grandkids and that mm -hmm. in different communities, and they're really looking forward to it to come. Yeah, that too. So it's it's kind of an ice cream truck for for people who like to yes. read. <laughs> yes. And then you talk about converting slides and tapes and that to mm -hmm. to some other mode of that. How about pictures? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, we have a we actually have a scanner that will do pictures now. Um, so it's just a matter of coming in with the photographs that you want to make digital and put them on the flatbed scanner and yep okay when everything going on you had a kids area at the Westwood Mall mm -hmm. I know you had to pull it out during construction after construction I saw how benefit that was for people coming in with kids and everything that mm -hmm. it's a uh, satellite type deal mm-hmm I think something like that in the future of some type may be worthwhile to start planning in the future in that too because I think it would be beneficial for everybody in that too so yeah there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of benefit to having satellite libraries um, or branches um, there's also a lot of cost that goes along with it I know that I know yeah that. <laughs> dang it it always comes back to money doesn't it yes. and, <laughs> and last thing I have listening to what you have for the kids and everyone else and that and this is going to be costly too but uh <laughs> not that much microscopes for micro minerals and that where kids can come up and view the micro minerals and that because they give a tremendous view of what the minerals are like and that too so and there's a way to work around it and that too so is it a specific kind of microscope no not really and okay. that because uh, we do have a microscope in the library of things um what, what I have is I have my own microscope uh -huh. and I made a little turntable so I can put this, the little uh, micro minerals containers that I can just keep turning the table oh, around I the see. seat and uh -huh. set it up so that it's pretty well in, in scope each time mm -hmm. you may have to adjust a little bit I think I get up about 10 or 12 at a time in that so uh, okay but I've seen some others where there's been uh, more elaborate sections too so that's something too when you start looking at uh, minerals as a whole that what's out there because kids don't know it mm -hmm. see it in that. Mm -hmm. and that my kids my grandkids when they come I have to be down there because they're they're all over in that uh -huh. I, I found out that 
that's something that would uh, could be done relatively inexpensive in that. So. so is that something I could reach out to you about? Yes. Okay, yes. I will. Yeah, so. Yep. We do Should have we a, our minerals here. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have an area in the youth services department that um, we call our maker space and we put crafts and things out but we also have microscopes for that area um, and i don't know what you services has been putting out as the slides for viewing um, but i'm sure minerals would be of interest so I'll, I'll send you an email if that's okay you have to be careful with them because they're so small but mm -hmm. kids can be taught to be very careful yes so. yeah thank you that's great anybody else so I just have one question. Is there a fee to digital, digitize the um, materials? Mm -mm. No. So anyone can come in and use it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Heat? How often do you have this computer help? Heat, turn your microphone. Oh. It is up. Okay. Just a smooth time. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you have the, the sessions on helping people with computers? Um, every moment that we're open. What's that? Every moment that we're open. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. People just come up to the reference desk and, and ask for assistance. Um, we have tried to do classes at, you know, at right. certain times, but people bring in so many different devices at once and have so many different questions. It's really hard to do in a class setting. Um, we do have um, a partnership with Northern's tech department, and they send over students, um, and they do a kind of a one-on-one a -on -one tech help, too. Um, so we have both our reference staff and then we have the northern students who are on site. Um, I think, I don't remember what day of the week that happens. Might be Fridays. Um, I'll but, check it out. Yeah. But at any time, the reference desk can help you. Anything else? Great. That was a lot. I, I know. Go Sorry. <laughs> Maybe you should come two or three times a year. <laughs> and, and focus, you know, on some of the newer things and spend some time on them and yeah, share. I'd be happy to. Goes out on YouTube, so it's a benefit. Wonderful. Besides our guys. Yeah. They're great. Mm hmm For Keeping sure. Us up, up to date. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We don't have our fire department report. Is there anything, John, that that uh, maybe Dan wanted to share or something? I know he said he's in training. Nothing he pointed out. Yeah, they're actually down on the other end of the building doing training tonight, so um, that's why he's not here. That's okay. I just wondered in case you know you meet with them. If there's something he said, oh, by yeah, the way, yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, remembering anything specific of importance to share. Okay. Public works. We can finally get Lenny and see him bigger too. There he is. Well, let me hold on, Lenny. I can't get, I don't have any sound. Hold on. Are you on mute still or no? Nope. Okay. Let's see if I can get you here. I don't know why you wouldn't be on here. Switch computers, but can you hear, can you talk now, Lenny? I no, let me try it here. Technology problems. That's why we need upgrades in this room. <laughs> Hold on one second here. Okay, Lenny, can try it now. Okay, how about now? Ta -da. We got you. We can hear you. Okay, very good. Um, for the stormwater, we sent out an RFQ uh, to various parties regarding that NPS grant that we had received. Uh, we got one back by the deadline, um, and we went through it here, and it looks like it's going to be satisfactory, so we're going to ask them for a proposal. Um, so we're hoping to get that, that process moving here, ASAP, uh, just to get moving with it here. 
Um, wastewater, uh, we responded to an alarm at the US 41 lift station and lo and behold, we found that our number two pump was jammed up again. Uh, it happened, I think uh, a couple weeks ago, just before that, and we found, I think it was a pair of pants or something in that one. Uh, this one here, we found some undergarments all wrapped up in it. Um, we removed them and got the pump back into operation. This is just kind of part of the game. Uh, this kind of happens at a lot of different places. People like to flush all kinds of things down into the sewer thinking it goes away, but it ends up in our pump impellers and that's not fun trying to cut all that stuff out. Um, we do have two uh, sewer hookups uh, scheduled or at least tentatively uh, scheduled here for later on this month. Uh, they're gonna both be grinder pump stations. Uh, we're currently uh, kind of experiencing some of this supply chain issue with grinder pumps now. So we're about three to four months out on some of the repair pumps or actually the new pumps that we're using to put in here. So we're kind of trying to keep uh, ahead of this and trying to keep an eye into the future, what we think we might need, what we might not need, and kind of trying to place orders like well beforehand here. So um, just because everything is so still kind of crazy with the uh, supply chains. Water. Um, we had been busy this summer here trying to get uh, new hydrants in. Um, we did our last project of the, the summer here, just I think it was last week or the week before, it was uh, uh, over at Woodridge uh, Avenue there. So uh, I know Trustee LaRue probably seen our crew over there working. Um, we replaced a 50 year old uh, Traverse City hydrant with a brand new East Jordan hydrant. So hopefully in the future, this is kind of something that we want to look at uh, trying to try to start rotating some of this old stuff out with new stuff here too, because they're, they're starting to get that 50 year life. Um, also, waverization, it's all about Not me. Lenny's. Lenny, we're not getting any of that. Uh, we found a galvanized service line. So uh, that's gonna kind of get into that, uh, that the complete material uh, uh, service. I, I forgot what the acronym is now, but it's gonna be kind of come into that where uh, we start getting galvanized that could have been at one time um, connected to lead. So we just went ahead and we put all new copper in there, took pictures, documented everything. So uh, we're gonna keep all our records for that when that stuff starts coming up uh, hot and heavy here in the next uh, couple of years. Lenny, uh, building and grounds. Lenny, hey, Lenny. We didn't hear the beginning yeah. of that part. What, we lost you for a minute. You were but oh. but 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 but. So, but we, about, heard, uh, we heard the end about the copper and replacement, oh, but we don't know what it pertains okay. to. Yeah. So uh, we found a galvanized service line when they were working on that Ontario Phase Two, and it's it's kind of part of that complete uh, material uh, inventory thing that we have to do with the light service lines. Um, this was not a lead line, but we can't prove that it never was connected to lead, especially since it was galvanized. So we went ahead and we we uh, totally replaced that. We documented that. We're going to keep that in our records, and we're going to use that as part of our reporting here in the next couple of years for replacing lines and stuff like that. Um, building and grounds uh, are be doing uh, routine mowing. Uh, routine clean, cleaning and maintenance. Uh, we're gonna start the uh, winterization of the irrigation systems at both Lions Field and at the office. Um, uh, our crew has also been replacing, uh, busy replacing the, the fence at the Northwoods tank. Uh, when we got a coat uh, to repair that fence, it was pretty expensive there. So I kind of consulted with Andy and uh, he, he figured that he could do it, and so he's currently up there working on it right now, and uh, hopefully it'll be done here within the next week or two. We also went through, you might have noticed at the office, a lot of the uh, flower beds there got pretty much totally cleaned out and rushed out. The, 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 the Amanda and Nicole kind of went through there and took all the stuff out, and they're making a plan for next year to kind of, uh, for landscaping and stuff of what the different types of plants and stuff that they want to get in there so we could really get it looking really nice throughout the, the summer here. So um, that's all I have. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Anything for Lenny? Ernie? So on landscaping of flowers that around the township, what I've seen is the crew has done a great job, really improved what we had in the past to that. So thank you for it. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Good stuff. Okay.
All right. Mr. Zappa, our attorney report, please. You got the assessor's report there. Oh, yeah. I Sorry, I had a red note on here. We don't have one. I have a written one here. Oh, you got a written one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it must be in the packet. It must then. be special. <laughs> Would you like to read mine? Oh, I guess I didn't get it. It's at the packet. Okay. Well, let's read it then. The assessing department has been actively performing field work on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays as weather and staffing permits. We are on track to have the northernmost quadrant of the township completed by fall. New construction permits will be completed in late October and November to add as new value for 2022 as well as finalizing the partial construction from 2020. Our commercial district along the US 41 M28 corridor will need to have new pictures taken as well. We'll be working with the township manager to arrange for the work to be completed either after 5 p.m. or on the weekend when traffic is slower and it is a safer work environment to complete the process. Land values are being determined and will be in place by the end of October and our department will be working on setting our ECF neighborhoods to prepare for the 2022 assessment role. Okay. Cross that off. It's a written report. Thank you for that, Ernie. Okay, now, Mr. Z, you're up. Well, <clears throat> the good news is there are no major legal crises or new issues that were unanticipated during the month. It's been a very busy month, mostly business as usual type of items. Um, some of the things that crossed my desk since my last report is, uh, would include the stormwater management plans that are part of your agenda tonight that have to be, uh, well, the easement portion of those have to be approved by the township board. Um, ongoing tax tribunal appeal issues. Um, this time of the year, it's frequently uh, just receiving the docket for, uh, orders from the tribunal and uh, establishing the dates and deadlines of when appraisals are due and um, mandatory disclosures are due. Um, I reviewed the DDA survey that the uh, DDA was proposing to send out and suggested a few fairly minor revisions for legal purposes. Um, I looked at the Sheriff Department contract, which uh, you have later on in the agenda. And from a legal standpoint, it looked fine. It's essentially the same as the last two years, with the exception of a several cent um, increase in the uh, hourly rate. Um, now would be the time for the board to potentially consider if you wanted any revisions to that in the terms of what the Sheriff's Department does, but strictly from the legal review process, there are no issues with that. Um, we had a zoning question, uh, the procedures that might come about on abandonment of uh, an alley that's perpendicular to US 41 with a potential development that may occur. Um, ongoing communications with an attorney who's representing a resident in, um, with regard to abandonment of partial streets that uh, were begun to be abandoned by the Road Commission in 1987 and has never been completed. That's in the hands of the attorney for the residents at this point uh, with a proposal that we came up with on a method of attempting to resolve that for everybody um, and bring it to a conclusion. Um, we discovered that there was a, a list pendens, which is a, a Latin term for a, a notice of pending litigation that uh, everyone thought somebody else took care of in 2013. Um, that was about a 15 minute prospect, but it had to be done. That was removed in the past month. Um, that was dealing with your litigation on the Fat Boys uh, bar that ended about eight years ago. Um, Ongoing follow-up with regard to a sewer backup that um, has been submitted to the insurer for review to determine if there might be uh, coverage for some of what's being claimed there by a resident. And we've had a couple of FOIA issues that have been a little bit outside the norm um, that I've gone over with the clerk in the past month. 
And that, uh, there's probably something I'm missing, but that's kind of a thumbnail sketch of uh, what I took a look at since I gave you my last report. That's a big thumb. I did have a call from a resident today uh, asking if we've gotten anywhere, we collectively, with the Michigan Tribunal as far as legislation or whatever. She wasn't here when this took place, so I gave her all the background from 2000, whatever it was, 9, 10. Um, and she's wondering if because nothing's happening and she knows that we're still having litigation issues and uh, tribunal, whatever you want to call them, issues, I guess, um, does that mean it's done or fixed? And I said, no. <laughs> No, no, we keep getting new ones, and I'm sure across the state. So I didn't know if she, she might be listening. Um, if you have anything to add that you know of? Well, there is no new legislation, and getting new legislation through, uh, passed by the House, the Senate, and signed by the governor would be quite an uphill battle at this point. Um, additionally, it needs to be kept in mind that even if there is a legislative quote, solution, unquote, that that is likely to only address future um, appeals and assessments, the manner in which especially commercial real estate is um, assessed. It will not address, each time there's a tax tribunal appeal and there's an adjustment made to a big box store, for example, because that's the ones that hurt the most, um, you don't get that money back and there is no legislative fix to that because you've got the Headley Amendment that limits the increase in an assessment to either the um, uh, cost of inflation, cost of living adjustment or 5%, whichever is less per year. Now that can change um, if the property gets uncapped for some reason, if it's sold but on those types of commercial real estate, very seldom do those parcels sell. It's the same owner of that property for year after year and decade after decade. So the taxes, even though the value, the property value in the market, including even the raw land that the buildings sit on, goes up in value every year, but a township or a city or a county has no way of recouping or recovering that increased value unless or until the property becomes uncapped. So once a commercial parcel has its assessed value and correspondingly its taxable value uh, because property is assessed at 50% of its true cash value and its taxable value is based on that, once it's cut by 40%, let's say, and then we've had a couple that have been actually cut that much um, through tax tribunal processes. You don't get that back even if there is new legislation to bring it back up to the level where it was being assessed at before those appeals. It takes a long time at 5% or less if the cost of living is less than that to get back up to that assessed level. So that is the problem, and even new legislation will not completely <coughs> fix or address the losses that have been sustained during the past roughly 12 years. Um, so legislation would be a very good thing to occur, but that will only address how things are assessed moving forward from that point forward. That's exactly what I told her. Oh, so, well, I guess I didn't need to say it again then. No, no, that's quite all right because the public needs to hear it in that format anyway, in that, that explanation. It's excellent. But at least I wasn't missing anything. But I guess her main question was, is there anything that we know of that's happening? And I said, well, I know that Senator McBroom and Rep. Ken Benzi are constantly either working on legislation, um, Judy Allen at Michigan Township Association keeps us apprised occasionally that they're still working on it, but like you said, unless the legislation is introduced or signed or whatever going forward, we're kind of stuck. So. Pete. Roger, did I hear you say you can assess them 5% when you 
reassess their, their property? 5%? No. Uh, basically, the assessment is capped under the Headley Amendment. So if there's, a, if there's a new addition put on, for example, you can assess that at the, the fair market value. It, it, and uh, the, the assessed value is 50% of the true cash value. So if a building is worth um, $14 million, for example, then its assessed value is $7 million. The 5% I was speaking of is the Headley, under Headley and the, how much the taxes or the, you know, the assessed value can go up each year is the smaller of the cost of living, and there's an index and a formula to determine what that is, or 5%. So even if the property, because the market has expanded and they're not making more property, and there's less and less available, the values are going up, and the assessor's job is to correctly value those in case sales occur. But if no sale occurs, the um, taxable value is capped at either 5%. If the, let's say if the inflation rate is uh, 7%, then the um, increase would be 5%. If the inflation rate is 2%, then it, uh, the cap is 2%. Say remodel or upgrade any paint or something like that. Can you come back then? Well, paint is just maintenance. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so, so that's not uh, that's not an assessable uh, tax more, increase more event. Haven't um, well, there are distinctions. Some of these questions are better addressed to your assessor. You have a level four assessor who takes an ex a large amount of training to keep up to date every year on the changes and the, uh, the things that are permitted to be taxed and not taxed. And there's a, there are some types of improvements that are almost like splitting hairs. Those are excellent questions for your assessor uh, in just describing the, the difference between what constitutes, uh, you know, if I repave my driveway and my, it was all cracked and cruddy before and now I've got a brand new driveway, is that, is that maintenance or is that and a taxable improvement. Ask your assessor. Th those are the types of things that are distinctions um, of what can be included in the assessed value and what can't. An addition is a clear cut one. If you put on, e even for a homeowner, if you've got a three bedroom home and you convert it, you add on 400 square feet um, to put on a couple new bedrooms, that's a, you know, that's taxable as an improvement to the premises. Painting your house um, generally is not, even if your house really needed paint. Okay, anything else for the attorney? Good, thank you. Always good information. Um, let's look at community linkage real quick. If anybody has anything they want to share. If they're hearing from the public, that's kind of why I threw that in um, for my resident. Um, I, yes, go ahead, Pete. I had a person ask me this morning about, are we gonna go around and start cleaning up yards and that? Are we going to? No, I mean, enforce that. We have a blight ordinance in the works. Yes. At, it's with the Planning Commission. Yeah, and we already have an ordinance. It's not being we, followed. Well, that, then that's the question. Are we going to enforce the ordinance we already have? I would say we are enforcing the ordinance we have, and Jason can address that. We're not enforcing it. going to create a blight ordinance, though. That's called, um, help me with that, um, it's not yard, and there's a, what is it called now? Roger, you're on the spot. <laughs> Um, what we have in place property, now, property maintenance. Property maintenance. Property maintenance. Yeah, I knew it was yard and something. Yes, that's what mm -hmm. we have, and that's in force. But blight takes it a little bit farther, and that's what they're working on to come to the board. Um, so I did want to. I, I don't mean to interrupt on yeah, that, but keep ahead. in mind that you just hired a new person 
who is uh, doing a pretty good job on the couple that he's been, that I'm aware of, that he's been made aware of. So you, you had a little bit of a lapse there for a couple of months or more. And with the COVID period, where quite frankly it was difficult to get out there and enforce some of those issues, but you've got um, Eric Powers, your new um, planner. planner, is also doing some code enforcement work, not just on property maintenance, but I am aware of specific ones that questions have, there's another thing that crossed my desk, um, have come up and uh, he's had some successes already in the short time he's been here on that. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm reading my notes and I'm not sure. I'm not sure where I was going. Oh, first of all, we wanted to consider a board photo October 5th before the next meeting. Do you see a problem with that? Does everybody expect to be here? Okay. October 5th, it's our next board meeting. So like 10 after 6 and some kind of nice you know, not dress up, but not blue jeans. Okay, so that's going to be all right. I'm going to plan on that. Also, one of the things that we talked about at the last meeting was thanking Super One for all of their great efforts. If you looked at the website, you'll see that uh, the check from Super One back to us, their, all their profits um, that they made at Community Days comes right back to the Township Rec Committee or you know through the rec committee to the board in our budget um, so John did dig out a thank you card does everybody want to sign that I, a couple things were suggested a thank you card and some kind of a resolution or a plaque or something so if you want to do the card I can at least get that in the mail and I'll write something nice you want to do that I can pass this around write something nice so we know what we're signing <laughs> if you want to sign it because I said let's do it tonight while you're all here I promise I'll write something nice. Okay, I do have something else I want to hand out for you, and you can look at it. Not for now, I just want to get it to you because I just, just proofed it today. This is our township committee list. John has his, so we can just go this direction. So peruse that in your spare time, and if you see something that you question, you don't think the person is on the committee, you think the date's wrong, whatever, just let me know. And I'm going to um, update that so that I can make sure Andrew knows who to get a hold of when these terms expire. We have a lot of open seats next month on some of these committees, and I want to make sure that they're right before we contact them and say, hey, would you like to re-up? So just take that home with you, check it out. If I don't hear from you, I'm assuming it's okay. Okay, you that's, did good. that's all I have on that. Um, so, Randy, how would it be if we move these folks up? Yeah, so we'll, they were coming. so we'll make a motion to move up the 8E to 8A, which is considered North Country Disposal Request to 8A, and we just, we just had Lenny drop off, but he's back. There he is. I, I support that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Hey, Lenny, so we're moving up 8A, or 8E <coughs> to 8A, so they're going to be up right now, so, okay? All right. Do you want to start us off, Lenny? Um, we have the letter in the packet. Okay, and you're on mute, so. Okay, you're moved up uh, 8E then? Is yep. that what you went to? Yep, 8E okay. is now 8 a. Okay. Okay. Um. Basically, I gotta find it here. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, represented, a representative from North Country had made a request. Um, oh boy. Yeah, that's all right. I caught you off guard. Didn't hey, Lenny, that. Don, and Ken are also here. If uh, oh, if okay, you need good their assistance on any of the explanations. Yeah, you might not be able to see them. Yeah, he can't right now. Okay, but, sorry about that. But, no. So anyhow, uh, 
Uh, Don had uh, made a request here. I actually had a meeting with John and I, and she had a request uh, to up the hours on our contract to actually amend the contract. Uh, what's actually happening, um, and Don, feel free to, to jump in if I'm wrong, but uh, with these new recycling carts that we have received, recycling is great and the carts are working out great, but it's um, it's causing a little bit more work. It's taking some more time for them to do the row. So while it's great that we're getting more recycling, um, there, is an, there is an added cost into it as far as time and uh, labor that is taking to, to get these uh, things collected. So that's a long and a short of it. Um, right now, uh, uh, North Country is asking for five hours per week at $168 an hour, uh, which would be about $3,637 a month. Uh, or $43,646.40 a year. Um, so I did run the numbers on that. Um, we would need a, to cover those costs, we would need a rate increase of $2.60 on top of our current rate right now. Um, so that would bring it from $16.25 up to $18.85. Which is what I said before about recycling not being free. There is a cost. With, people don't realize that. Um, would you like to make a statement or anything before we I guess kind of talk? What he Come said up to the microphone. Yes, please. Yeah. Is it on? It is on, okay. yeah. Thanks. Uh, what Lenny said is exactly why we're here. Um, we're thrilled, we're excited uh, that this is happening, that there's less garbage going into the landfill, and that this recycling program is taking off. Unfortunately, it's not free. It, I mean, it's, it's not. And we are in such a rural area that we initially started our own recycling facility, as most of you know. That's where we were um, sorting all of your recycling for years. And we took care of, you know, um, getting it out there and sending it off to recycling places. And um, in the beginning, it was it was great, um, but then they got overwhelmed. And we're like I said, we're in such a rural area that nobody in our close realm needs plastic or tires or glass. I mean, it's um, it's a it's a huge headache is what it is and it always has been but it's on the other hand it's it's fantastic for our youth coming up and our landfill and you know keeping everything out of the landfill that doesn't need to go into the landfill so now that the landfill has taken over the recycling that's awesome it's it's fantastic um, it has taken a lot of pressure off of us as far as you know, employees and, and sorting and handling and shipping and having them come and truck things out and bailing cardboard. And it has taken a little bit off of our shoulders as far as that goes. Um, but with the carts now, it's rough. Uh, we have the, we have the cart tipper on the back, which, you know, it's fine and dandy, but you still have to get that cart over to the back of the truck, hook it on there. It does tip it, but if there's anything in the bottom and if you're my size, you're not reaching in there to get that. It, 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 so you're slamming it a couple of times to get out and then we're worried about what's the winter going to bring with slush on the roads and you know high snow banks. Um, people aren't diligent about putting their stuff in a certain spot every week they just aren't they put it out wherever it's clear of snow and as much as they can and um so it makes it tough and i think that and i've done an analysis of these carts and what's it costing our business in order to uh, keep these routes moving and the extra man power that we're having to do basically what we have to do now is we have two drivers on the truck because one guy cannot pick the whole route it just can't work like that anymore so now we have a more expensive employee on the truck and what they do is they flip they you know one will pick for an hour however they want to do it sometimes they do half a day sometimes they do an hour or two um, depends on the weather and you know what have you if it's hot or if it's freezing cold or pouring rain 
it's up to them. We leave it up to them how they want to do it. But there's always two drivers on the truck now instead of a driver and a laborer. It just can't. That one person just can't do it all. It just can't happen. So what we did is I, I took a look at things and how we were, you know, coming about on this contract. And we do have this contract at a pretty much a bare minimum. I mean, we're not trying to rape anybody over the coals. Um, we've been working with this township for 15 years, and we love this township. We take pride in working for this township and their residents. And um, lately, it just have, hasn't been, um, you know, making ends meet. And so... Um, you're not the only municipality that we will be going to about this um, but we do need to make ends meet we can't be running up here and not making it work so in order to make it work this is what we've come up with well in the majority of the public you can see the blue containers everywhere I was right. thrilled to get ours yeah and to be able to lessen the amount of trash from I mean even for uh, this is just small white trash bag. We had three. Now we have one. Right. So, if you saw TV six the other night, Brad was standing at the recycling center with all of this cardboard and plastic behind him. Mm -hmm. It was just amazing. And he said, and I don't know what, if that was a month or a year to date or what. I think that was just the next shipment going out. Um, but that's not in the ground. Right. That's not getting caught on fire. Right. or you know filling up these huge mounds people don't think you know they put it in their trash they don't think where it's going and in order to make recycling effective it has to have a place to go you have to have the market so you know part of our job here too is to is to educate the public right and, and your information is vital because he even mentioned uh, brad mentioned um <clears throat> If somebody throws a milk carton and doesn't at least put the lid on or clean it out or something into the bin and they've got a bunch of newspapers or cardboard in there, now that's ruined. So it's going in the landfill. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all about education and I'm going to put uh, um, on the back of our uh, calendar every month that goes with the utility bills, I've got the breakdown for the battery recycling. So we're going to put that in the first of October. That's fantastic. So it's all, you know about kind of helping each other and making sure we're all doing the right thing and it's impossible to let everybody know. It is. We do have a lot of people that call and, and, and actually on your drop center days when you have that first Wednesday, at least five residents will walk in the door and say, am I doing this right? Is, can I, or they'll bring something. Is this recyclable? You know, and it's great, and then you can explain more to them, and they're interested, and they want to know. Um, I, I mean, I think it's just, it's fantastic. It really is, the amount that isn't going into the landfill now. It's, and with everybody coming together to do it, and, and you know, all the municipalities in the county sending their recycling to one spot, it makes it more marketable, at least. And he's trying to get some from the, you know, the rest of the UP, too, to make it even more cost-effective. Mm -hmm. um, we have to remember that while this is, might be costing us something now, the long-term benefit of this, of not having to either find another site for another landfill, oh, which is, God. like, almost ridiculous, yeah. and what that would cost, mm -hmm. but even to create another cell, mm -hmm. and I can't remember, I haven't talked to Brad in a while, they're up to six cells or something and they have eight something like that mm -hmm. so th he's just working so hard to try to make sure stuff that can be recycled gets not in that landfill we don't want right. to bury it mm -hmm. you know they just keep hauling dirt and sand in there and they're making the big mounds bigger and bigger and they have trucks doing um you know we all need to go out there and see what new things they've done but they've got trucks making paths and then yes. they have to plow that in the mm -hmm, winter time mm -hmm. to make sure they can get it over the edge. Yeah. Well, there was a few trucks over the edge this week. You got <laughs> one that's a little high. Not mine, thank yeah. God. Knock on wood. But so, um, go ahead, Randy. Well, again, um, recycling does cost a little bit of extra money. It's less than twenty-four dollars for the year. The increase would be so that's not earth-shattering. Two dollars extra a month is it? horrible but um, but again 
in the long term, as the supervisor said, it will um, bump that landfill closure date down the road, which will be very expensive when it happens. So, I mean, there is a cost to it, and unfortunately, that's what, I mean, this, this is realistic. I mean, people got to realize this is a realistic cost, and um, some residents don't want to recycle, and that's their choice, but most of them are recycling, and unfortunately, you know, we got a grant for the blue bins, and we are recycling, and this is the actual cost. So, I mean, we got really no choice to approve this. Is that a motion? It will be, yeah, it is a motion. Support. Okay. Motion and support. Um, John, did you have your light on first? Or? I just wanted to mention that the, the only reason in my mind, and I think Lenny would agree with me, that we were willing to bring this to you is because it's a change that we implemented that had a negative impact on the contract we have with North Country. Um, we never like to see the cost go up on behalf of our customers, obviously. But when you're trying to do what you think is in the best interest of those customers, um, sometimes you do have these unintended consequences, as I stated in my, my uh, report this month or this, this week. Um, so I guess I just wanted to make that clear that it, it is a change that we implemented to the existing contract. And we didn't pay, and neither did the residents, for the blue bins. That was a grant that our previous planner wrote. So it didn't cost us anything to have that. So right. Maybe yeah, this it was is nice. Kind of the, the other side. Yeah, and thank you for seeing that, John. I really appreciate that. Um, I can't imagine what we will have to go through if we have to find land for another landfill. Where? I mean, I, I just. Somebody has to buy it, too. Andy, right. Ernie, go ahead. Okay, I have three, uh, three questions. Uh, the $2 increase, okay, I can see where it's coming through, but we're looking at our budget now. We have 60 cent increase there. Is that still gonna be something we're gonna have to discuss at budget time and that too, so? Yeah, definitely, and um, I, I also should mention in my report in your packet, I did have a typo. I indicated they were actually asking for compensation for an additional hour per day. It's actually two hours per day in the summer, which is why they're saying an average of five hours per day per week. So, because we know the winter's probably gonna be two to three hours, we don't know, uh, per day. Um, we have to look at the entire solid waste budget top to bottom, and that's what I've tasked Lenny to start documenting so that when we get to solid waste in our budget discussion, we have some solutions that maybe can cut into what we see as our total cost increase for the year. Um, our solid waste budget is just the one that's the least sustainable in its current state. Okay, go ahead. The uh, second one is, uh, when will this become effective? So, if Our current proposal is to make it effective with the 2022 budget, so January 1. Am I correct, Lenny? I, I think, uh, Don, were you asking for this one immediately for this increase, or? I am, yes. I mean, yeah. we've been hauling them since May. Okay, so we'll have to look at the current state of the fund, top to bottom, to determine if it's something that the township can cover for the remainder of the year, or if we have to do a transfer from, from the fund balance into operating to cover it. You have money, there's money in the fund balance. I already looked there. If you want, the board wants to transfer it, there's dollars there to, to move it out. If not, I'll go back to the general fund who's borrowed money from solid waste to get it from that area. But there's dollars there, whichever way you go in that too. So the other question is, and we've never got an answer, and they've danced around it at the landfill, is some kind of a dollar payment back to the townships on the, all the recyclable stuff. And then I think they're dancing around it and they're gonna to continue to dance around it. That, but I figured I'd better bring it up anyway just to talk about it. Jim Nackervis has asked that quite a few times at the meetings too. I would advise not holding your breath. I'm not. I just said they're dancing around it all the time and that too, so. Yeah. That's it. Linda had a okay. question. Too. Linda, okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm guessing we're going to reevaluate this after so many months because we're giving an increase based on we're not sure how many hours are going to increase. We also, I'm guessing, are going to be thinking about some things we can do 
to reduce the number of hours that the people have to work. Whether it's we encourage people if that card isn't filled up, you put it in your other bin. Um, whether it's uh, well, that would be trash then. No, we still have our old. Oh, your old recycling bins. bins. Yeah. Oh, got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. I know Pete said last time that his neighbor had two pieces in a bin. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there are some things that people can do to reduce the Absolutely. time spent and. Um, I also know that there are people who have many bags of trash for two people in a household, and we've gone down this road a million times, and Ernie and I probably have a half a bag. So we're increasing everyone's costs equally, when in reality, everyone is not disposing of trash equally. So there are lots of things to think about here. Um, I know I said, on, yeah. Right? Yeah, well, and, and I just want it to be reevaluated after a certain amount of time. I don't want this to be like the landfills where they said we're increasing the cost, and we had to say to them, okay, are you going to decrease the cost now? So, yeah, I think it, it bears looking at. Well, the motion is to approve the request to amend the current contract to include the five extra hours, and that was supported. So... I just had one comment to make too. What is the purpose of putting your recycling bin out if it's only a quarter or a half full? Last night I looked at mine and I went, I don't need to put it out. Don't put it out. Wait. Right. Unless you got garbage in there that should have been rinsed and stuff that's rotting, which shouldn't be in there anyhow, don't put it out. Don't make them go through that labor to empty it if there's only this much in the bottom. I mean, that's common sense to me, anyhow. That's an that's education. Saying, some of that we can educate the public as much as we can. Uh, I could maybe put that on the bottom of the, the other half of the recycling <coughs> um, newsletter. But So the point is the motion was made to amend the current contract to include the five hours. So to me that means immediately. Um, and discussion about you know whether we look at the budget first or try to amend it later so we, we need clarification on this based on what treasurer Johnson mentioned I would suggest we make it immediate per the request with the transfer being made from the fund balance to cover the added cost for the remainder of this year Till January no. first. correct Till January and then we'll discuss the entire fund during our budget work session that we have to schedule here later on there's, the there's, there's, there's okay? 201,000 sitting in there right now I'm fine okay John are you all right with that John are you okay yeah. with that okay no I no I want to uh, first of all I want to say your crew your crews are extremely courteous well-trained people and I think they do a fine job Thank you. Secondly, I want to make a comment. I think that recycling is, for a lot of people, it is some kind of an added con inconvenience. Moving these carts around is not going to be always that simple, but it is going to be worthwhile. And some people who won't like the inconvenience turn out to be the same people that were putting tires and things in the woods. Just keep that in mind when you're listening to the person who has the biggest complaint about the inconvenience of recycling. Okay. Um, repeat. How long is this increase going to last? I mean, is it the length of the contract or is it as long as we have these new carts it's basically an added um it's an addition to our contract and what we're doing here is asking to get paid for that addition That's what in a nutshell say. where are we in the contract how many years do we have this might be year two of a seven-year extension two yeah. or three mm -hmm. I mean, like it was a couple of years ago we did this yeah. okay it was renewed shortly before I came. Um, yeah. March 15th of 2019, okay. it was renewed. Um, 
um, for five years. Approximately five years left. With an additional five on that um, option. I mean, I hate to um, leave a salty taste in anybody's mouth that, you know, we're coming here asking for money because <clears throat> you've all decided to recycle. <clears throat> That's not why we're here. Um, we're here just to get the coverage of these extra hours that is it taking us to add this to your residential contract. That's why we're here. We're not looking, I mean, we applaud you for what you're doing. This is a fantastic township. We love working here. Um, we're basically just here asking for what we're, the extra work that we're doing. That's all. Like John said, they're very courteous and they're hardworking people and, you know. Thank you, we try. John, they like cookies. <laughs> oh yeah, cookies and candy, those boys are spoiled. <laughs> well, that's Probably a big question. thing we can do to help is I leave mine right at the yeah. edge of the garage door and leave the lid open. Mm -hmm. So when I have stuff, I throw it in there, like John, or Dan said, if it's not full, don't put it out. Right. They might think they have mm -hmm. to. And leaving the lid open doesn't really matter because that uh, tipper does open that lid once it, you know, so um, just so that nothing blows out is probably oh, yeah. okay. Close it at the road. Yeah. yeah. To close just it. In the garage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, one thing we're running into too is there are some people that are using those as like their extra garbage can. Um, they're just not recycling and they're, you know, so that's kind of a pain because if they're not going to recycle, then they shouldn't have the can. You know, um, when our guys pull up there and they see that can, they, they don't look in there. They assume it's recycling. Um, you know, therefore Brad gets at the end of the route day, um, garbage in the recycling because of that, you know. I mean, if the guys see it, of course, they dump it as trash. But there's times where it's already in the hopper and, you know, they're running, they're running the hopper and they see, you know, there's a, you know, bag of diapers or what have you in there. And it's like, oh, dang, that shouldn't be in there. Or it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, we've all had the call for questions. So okay. you can add it later if you want. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. One more comment? The only comment I have, I would like to have some idea of who these people are so we can contact them and that. Because it's costing I, money all the way down the line. I think we're just going to have to add some more education to the back of the calendar or something to tell people. If you're not putting recycling in the cart, don't Use put it, it on the curb because... We can't have trash mixing in with the recyclable materials and damaging the whole load. Right. Don, would there be a way that if they saw that, could they just leave it there? Don't oh, even we do. Don't there. even empty it. Just leave it there. Well, we have you been. Do. I mean, we have left some that are consistently doing it, and then they've called, and then we've had a conversation with them and um, rectified it a little bit. Um, is there a way that the township could find out who these people are too if it's continuous so we could send them a note that this is costing all the taxpayers extra money i mean I, I don't know. i'm I don't not know in the business to be a tattletale but if you need me to be i'm your girl <laughs> i don't know um I, I guess we'd have to talk about that um you know and the guys writing addresses down it you know just it's taking more time you know and then if it's dark and i don't i mean although they probably could tell you you know they know that linda doesn't have much trash and she's got a brown can and you know um you know, John puts his his recycling out every two weeks. You know, I mean, they know these routes. They know the houses. Um, you know, possibly we could. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of like, um, yeah. I mean, we should probably have a conversation. I guess. Follow the truck. <laughs> Follow the truck. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we've got a lot of good information, and the motion was approved. Thank you. So we'll see how we can. Kind of and I'm available. I mean, if you need questions or if, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. This has been my only gig. So um, if you want to pick my brain, I've got a lot of ideas the way things could get better. Okay. That's great. Thank you, Thank you for the Thank heads you. up and the letter. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. for coming, too. Thank you.
All right, then we're going to go back to reconsider rescheduling budget work sessions. Are we okay. finished with Lenny, or do we need to? No, he'll be. Again? He's got super paving. Yeah, he's got. to do this better. Yeah. I know what happens. We just add it as we're doing the agenda. We don't think about the order. Correct. Well, let's see. Let's do the recycling until he comes up, and then we'll see what happens. Recycling. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rescheduling. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. All right. You got your calendars? Yes. All right. The next two Thursdays are now <coughs> scheduled, and we would like to make some changes. Okay. And John and Randy today suggested that we maybe wait. Are you thinking three weeks? Is that? I didn't have my calendar no, at the yeah. time. Lenny will be back from vacation on the 4th of October, so if we could do something on Wednesday the 6th. Did you say 6th, John, or 5th? The 6th. 6th. So we're going to scrap, and are we going to oh. need motions? So that is yeah. the... No, but I mean, will we need motions to cancel, or, or how do you do that? To cancel can be, what we They can have. be in the same motion okay. that we cancel and so reschedule. So okay. if we do go with that Wednesday, Pete and I will be going to the Marquette County Township Association banquet up in Big Bay that evening. So it would have to be probably a little earlier in the afternoon. But we can't do it Thursday earlier? We could do it Thursday earlier. It's the evening where, where we had the conflict with my schedule. Brand and brand Which Thursday are you talking about? The same ones we currently have scheduled. Okay. Let's, right now we have let's, Thursday let's the Let's try. 30th. Thursday the 30th right now is 4 o'clock. Can anybody do it earlier that day? I can do it at sure. 2. Sure. I can do it at 2. Does 2 work for everybody? No, I got 2.30 hospital. Okay, 2 is the earliest you can do it because you're working. Yeah. Okay. Does Wednesday the 29th work for anybody? Keep in mind if we go with that date, Lenny will not be here. The 29th. Oh, Correct. So you yeah. are. Okay, okay. So we need to scrap the 30th meeting, right? Work session. Um, if, if you want your department head to be here yeah, to discuss he his to. budgets, I think it would yeah. be advisable right. to wait until I'm he returns. It off. Okay. So we're into the next week. Thursday the 7th, does that work? Maybe 2 o'clock? Lenny will be back, right? Let's see here. 7th of October? Yes. What time you said you see him? I'm thinking 2. It's, it depends on Randy's work schedule. Yeah, 2 would be fine on that day. It's on the Thursday the 7th. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Does that work for you, Lenny, the 7th of October? Yeah, he's shaking his head. Okay. And we're going to be dis discussing what? Public works. Two o'clock. So 10, 7, 21 at 2 p.m. Well, True. 2 to 4. And that'll be, um, yeah, Thursday. that'll be public works. Okay. And, um... The other one was a wrap-up session, which fire. Well, no, we did fire. We already. did fire Dan before at the. We didn't end. finish it though. Yeah. Well, sort of. If he wants to come in in the wrap-up, we can do that at that last session. So, if you got any questions of the fire fund, I didn't have anything, but I just I didn't remember finishing it. Well, we we, we sort of did at the end, that. yeah. Because really, the fund, the, the budget did not really change a whole no. lot. So, um, but opportunity for any of the budgets to be re, re, revamped will be on that wrap up session. So, so, we need to scrap the 14th, October 14th, or make it like two or move it earlier, but or, I, or noon or whatever you. What's your I day? work till three that day, but I could probably get out early at two. On the, do it at two, on the 14th. Oh, so that went to work. Is Wednesday any better for you? No. Okay. So does the 14th work for you, everybody? Or do you want to move October it to the 14th. 21st? 2 o'clock? 3 o'clock? 2 o'clock on the 14th I probably can get here for. So if it's moved up a little. 2 o'clock on the 14th, that would be our, our wrap-up session. Is that okay? works for me yeah 
Is that okay, John, for you? The 14th at 2 o'clock? I will do everything in my power to make sure I'm available. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Considering you've accommodated my initial request, I'll do everything I can. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I'll make a motion that we reschedule the two existing budget work sessions for um, the public works will be now on 10 7 21 at which is a Thursday at two o'clock will be public works and then the wrap-up session will be Thursday, 10:14 at 2 p.m. instead of 4 p.m. Support. So. Now, are you going to then uh, address the one on the 30th that will be no longer needed? That's okay. I I, I will. I will put the postings up on the okay. website and the door. So. Okay. Now, this doesn't mean we can't schedule another one if we feel we need it. That's we've got them all the way till December. Yeah. So it doesn't <laughs> preclude us to add any more. Right. But but this is just an initial once through. How does it look? If we have more issues, we can always discuss them. Staff promises to come to you so prepared you don't need a fourth meeting. There you go. That would be good. Huh. All right. Thursday 10 7 at 2 p.m. and Thursday 10 14 at 2 p.m. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. It's always like pulling a chair. All right, so we need to move Lenny up, right? Consider the superior paving quote. Is that the one that pertains to him? Mm. No? Yeah, that would be Lenny's. He also has the uh, stormwater document approvals, which I could handle those too, along with the attorney Zappa. Well, how long is your strategic planning talk going to be? That's the question. Yeah, five minutes. Okay, well, keep moving then. What do you want me to do? Keep go moving. With, go with, yeah, keep it in keep order? Moving, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, is this in the packet? It is. I think it just it has a worksheet, but it doesn't have anything with it. So, in my effort to continue the discussion of strategic planning, I had a conversation with Susan Radwan. And the reason for that is because we need to get this done, for one thing. The second thing is Susan knows the township back and forth. She's done numerous visits with us. She knows our philosophy, how we think, most of the board members. And I think it's the most effective use of our time and money. I did talk to her about a half a day program. I talked about Zoom programs. I talked about a full day Zoom or in person. And she was very amenable to whatever it is we want. Um, John and I have talked about this ad nauseum. I've driven him crazy trying to get something scheduled. We have responsibilities to the future as well as some things that have not been covered or settled. And you have that in your memo from your mailbox. These are the items, one, two, three, four, five items. Well, I didn't highlight the rec master plan. That hasn't been done yet either. So this would be the topic, these would be the topics. I can get this to Susan, she can put something together. She can come up on a Tuesday night in October and take care of this in a, a whole day on a Wednesday and get it done. We'll have a five year and maybe even a 10 year plan in place. Um, and is there anyone at Northern that could do this rather than have mm -hmm. someone? That's possible, Pete, but we need to get it done. That's one objection. The second objection is by the time we find somebody and put an ad in and dig around and find somebody, the month is going to be gone. We can get this done in October. The third thing is that person is going to spend three or four hours learning the board, learning the township, figuring out our philosophy, and now we've lost a half a day when we could. I don't want to have this more than one day. I want to do it and get it done. Well, so next year. At Northern, why don't you ask the question anyway for next year? I don't know anybody at Northern. We shouldn't have to do this again for another five years, maybe four. The next oh. board can use it, can oh, worry yes. about it. So that's my reasoning. So we need to get it done. Partly because some of what we decide may affect the budget. 
So if we can get this done in October, get our work sessions done in October, we can have the budget ready to go in November. And if we have to make changes based on what we decide or if something comes up or if we get a, a, somebody else at the podium that needs an increase in something, we can get it done in this budget. Linda. <laughs> who, trying to talk fast, sorry. Who is to attend this strategic planning session? You? We've had multiple no. discussions, John and I, um, in previous ones. We've had all of the committee members, the planning commission, the road commission, or committee, all of them. It's pretty heavy. I just as soon have the seven of us and John. Not the planning commission? That's, yeah, that's iffy. No. And if no I can public. Have, if I can have no, one more minute. it's a public minute, meeting. It is. If I can have one more minute, her suggestion was to call in um, some of the movers and shakers in the community, the churches, the, the um, university, the hospital, the, mm. you know, and I said, oh. no, oh. <laughs> we, need to, oh. we need to do our work and get it done. Okay, well, I just wanted to tell you what she's suggesting. I said, okay. well, the health I don't want more than a day. We've had her suggestions in the past. Yeah, but I that's think, okay. I think what you're suggesting yourself is the thing to do. This board should meet and meet with her and get the damn thing over. Done. Yeah. If this were a master plan that we were tackling, then we would think about that. We'd want to go into the survey route and get some community maybe, participation maybe stuff. Maybe we will. Right. But we've already got that. This is just a few things left of all the things. Look at what we've gotten accomplished. Merging public works, the scheduling and truck upkeep, the fire department we can't shift. Emergency power. We took care of all this stuff. The succession plan for Randy. Did you say we Community could do this room. via Zoom? Mm -hmm. No, she would be here. Oh, that was an option, I thought you said. It was, but, yeah, I'm sorry. That's my recommendation, that she be here. She feels that she can be more effective in person, but she's totally willing to do it by Zoom if that's what you guys really want. What's the cost difference, I guess? to our residents. Um, we're going to have to pay her mileage, we're going to have that. to pay her yep. meals, we're going to have yep. to pay her. She can do a full day for about three grand. That includes everything. Mileage. We have versus the money. We have the money because we have not spent. Versus what year. on Zoom. Um, let me think where I put it. Oh, it's attached so I wouldn't lose it. Okay. Um, a half a day virtual is 1500 A full day virtual 2000 one day I I said she wasn't exactly sure because she was driving she said it's somewhere around 3,000 and I said I'm gonna say 3200 just in case and she said no I think it's closer to 3,000 where does she come from um, yeah somewhere I don't know exactly the city she has done this worldwide She's extremely experienced, and again, I'm picking on her because she knows the area. She knows the township. She knows our strategic plan from 12 years ago. And she, she knows the progression. It too, and she does write it. Yeah. I don't. I don't agree with Pete and going looking at Northern for something. Um, if we have her, she's been working with us. I don't want to. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. You know, let's stick with her and, and get it done. Period. But if I, I'm just, my biggest concern was the, the cost difference. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I had it right there so I could tell you. I'm, Is it really that much? No. I'm, Randy's rushing me, so I'm sorry. I'm going a little too fast. Well, so, I, don't, I don't have a problem with her coming up for a day. If it's, that, it if it's that little significance, no. It, it is much better in person. We can ask her more questions face to face. Yeah. It's easier for her to know what we're thinking and saying if she can see us clearly. Um, the only day that is bad for her is October 20th, but she would like to do it on a Tuesday night and then be here for Wednesday. And if we want 8 to 5 or whatever, we'll break for lunch, 9 to 6, whatever, or, you know, if we want to do 10 to 3 and whatever, it's totally up to us. But because her schedule is so booked, I'd like to... Mm -hmm get it locked down sooner than later. Ten to, ten to three is a nice time. 
Plus, we'll get lunch in there. So. If you think we can get it there. No, so no. I'll pose it with her and make sure that whatever she's thinking, because we've only got five things. Do it. So we just need a day, if a Wednesday. She prefers Wednesday because she can come up Tuesday, and the 20th of October is bad. Thursdays are good, so we could do a right. Wednesday night for Thursday. We could have her come on Wednesday the 13th of October. You could. That's planning commission meeting. Yeah. Well, yeah. she's not going to. Well, not during the day. But then it would be Thursday. That's right before our budget work session. Yeah, maybe the couple weeks later would be better. Okay. How about that? week of the um not the 20th but the week 27th. the 27th maybe would be good <coughs> she's only gonna meet with us on the 28th one day right one day she just needs travel time yeah yeah that, but she just said that wednesdays work good for her it doesn't have to be wednesdays thursdays are okay too okay so thursday. one day pick a day and not thursday the 28th yeah thanksgiving or is no. it? No, that's in, oh, we're in October. I'm in, no, I'm in November. Sorry. Well, the week of the 20th, no good. That's we've got a Unless board meeting Unless you all want to get drafted. <laughs> What's wrong with the 27th? 27th, they all want to get drafted. That's the planning commission again. It's a planning commission night. But you don't uh, want that interference. It only impacts me, right? I'll just buy dinner, too. <laughs> All right, should we ask her for October 27th? She That's fine. Yeah. October the 27th, 10 o'clock? That would be, that would work, yeah. yeah. All right. She's going to be here to get started at 9. I would think earlier well, would be better. We'll, we'll, actually have a, ask her. we'll actually have a two meetings before that date. Actually, on the 5th, we can nail it down a little closer, but... Um, it's off the post that as a work session anyway. So, in your time, do you want to three? Well, ten well, to we'll ask her what yeah. she, you know, if she's going to travel, she, we want to make sure what she'll be up here. Yeah, but if we're going to pay her for a day, we, we want her to work more than five hours. I Come on, you guys. <laughs> That's what she had said, though. She said 10 to 3, didn't you not? I said if we wanted no. to even do 10 to 3, we could ask her. But, you know, if we're going to pay her for eight, eight, hours, eight hours, we might as well take 10 to 8. Probably 9 to 5 nine would to be five good eight. with the lunch. <laughs> We'd have lunch provided here for us. Yeah. Someone can go to Dunkin' Donuts and get <laughs> coffee. Right. October 27th. At I'm not going to make a motion to right. schedule this yet because we've got to. You got to nail it down with her. But anyway, it's, we talked about it, so. Okay. So tentatively, the 27th. And will she give us some homework ahead of time? Oh yeah, she and I'll know. I'll visit with her. There's a lot of behind the scenes you don't stuff <laughs> that we're paying for that you know we. We're paying for it. I mean, that's it's not just the day. Well, I know that. But. So that's a good thing. It, it, it'll cost. Oh, I'm sure. All right. Eastern View and Northern View stormwater document approvals. Okay, Lenny, I'm trying to get you out of here. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> um, these are just uh, some stormwater approvals for easements and uh, maintenance plan uh, or ordinance. It's just that final approval is uh, the board's uh, up to the board. Uh, Attorney Zappa and uh, myself, uh, we kind of went through everything and everything looks satisfactory to us. So I'm just presenting it to you guys for final and official approval. Questions? So no, I have a question. Does the drain commissioner um, get involved in any of these stormwater things or not? Only where it's in the county drain. So there's certain areas where he would be involved in that, and then there's other areas where we have jurisdiction. So this one is would be one where it's just us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, no cost associated with this then. No. Nope. This is just uh, just approval. It's just official approval for for the easements and the the maintenance agreement. So yeah, no cost associated. I'll make that motion. And I'll second. Okay. 
Any more questions or comments? Let's see, this is just signing, so we don't need a roll call. Um, no. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Wish they were all that easy. <laughs> These one, other ones shouldn't take very long. Okay. Consider DDA appointment. Ooh. Well, I do need to kind of explain it first, at least for the public. Um, we have a retiring DDA, which is Downtown Development Authority board member. I mean, he, he's retiring, which means he needs to be off of the board because he's leaving his job, <laughs> not just retiring from the board. Um, so his, Frank Stabile is the property owner that this board member is representing and he has agreed to step into that position. I didn't go through a lengthy interview with him because pretty much all of us know Frank and the businesses he has, um, but he is willing, he's on vacation, otherwise he would have zoomed in tonight, but he's willing and able to pick up uh, when that seat is open. He knows what the time the meetings are. He's up to speed from you know his employee on what everything is that we're working on with the survey and everything. So I'm asking, I, my motion would be to um, approve the appointment for the Downtown Development Authority seat vacating by, being vacated by Brian Jensen and offer it to Frank Stabile and he will complete the term to 12-31-22. Support. So is that appointment Questions. immediate or is there a time? Is he, is Brian retiring right, right now? John, or? did you say he was gonna do one more meeting? October Brian? will be his last meeting. Okay. So it'll be effective. Um, yeah, he may end up attending. I think November. he'll attend the next November meeting. November 1, we'll make that effective for November 1 then. Okay, we don't have monthly have, meetings? No. So it'll be effective before the next quarterly meeting. Yeah, so 11 1 will be effective. Keep day. in mind they have been meeting monthly with special meetings though, so. Yeah, but just, yeah, just so they know it doesn't have to be by a certain date. So 11 1, I'll put the effective date to the uh, 20, 2022, 12 31 22. Okay. Any other questions? Tell Brian he's going to stay around until November 1. <laughs> Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And just so you know, we may have, we have another board member on that authority also retiring, and she's hoping that her replacement will take that seat, but you, so you may get another one in the next month or two. That will be determined. All right, so we skipped E, so now we can go with the 2022 contract for law enforcement services. Does that fall to you, John? It does, okay. and you did get a, a brief summary of that from, from Attorney Zappa earlier, <clears throat> and keep in mind the point he made that if you feel there's a need to change the services that we request of the Sheriff's Department, now's the time before we renew the contract. Based on everything I've heard to date, I don't know that there's any interest in changing the current coverage we're getting. Um, I think the cost increase is manageable in our current budget based on what you've seen already in the general fund. Uh, we are supplementing the law enforcement millage with general fund money, just like we're supplementing the road millage with general fund money. Um, something we're in a very fortunate position to be able to do, obviously. Um, and if I remember right, I shouldn't say this off the top of my head because I will likely get it wrong. I'm feeling like 27 cents an hour was the increase for next year, but I'm just trying to get to the right page. I think that's right, or 24, seems like something. The new rate will be $50.38 per hour for 80 hours a week at two, 209, 5.80, and 80 cents per year, or for the year, 2022. And the current year, we were just over $50 an hour. Okay. 
Anybody have anything they want to consider for changing the contract? This expires the end of the year, right? Correct. Okay. So we have time if somebody feels like they need to delve. Ernie? Do we feel that the 80 hours a week is sufficient for the township at this point in time and that? I know we don't have a lot of control as to where they're at in the township in those 80 hours, but so is the 80 hours sufficient? Generally speaking, I think they're covering the busiest times of the day. And if something happens after those 16 hours, it's whoever can respond first as far as agencies that have somebody on the clock. Whether it's state police, sheriff's department, the city, whoever can get here right. first. I've had so. that experience at that those few hours that are dark. So mm -hmm. they're out there. Any one of those other agencies will show. So after the 16 hours per day we pay for, we get the same service that everyone else in the county gets from the sheriff's office. For, it's kind of a first come first serve. Whoever, whoever has the next 911 call, that's where they go. And the last time, if you remember that the sheriff was here a month ago or so, and we visited with him briefly, um, and he was asked to, you know, spend a little more time in the, in like Trowbridge and in the populous areas as well as the highway. And I don't know if it was the next day or the day after, I spotted two sheriffs. Yeah. Fortunately, I was not speeding, and I was going to yell at Dan if I had gotten a ticket. <laughs> but I wasn't. <laughs> Luckily, I don't usually speed, but anyway, I thought, there they are. <laughs> They're out there. It was two different times. And then this week there was one out on the highway sitting and watching. Yeah, they're like, showing they the flag. Right? They really are. And the sheriff said, you know, they're not spending a lot of time on the highway because they can't pull There's anybody no over. To, no. People are pretty much letting people get through. They can't really speed. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're not out there because, like I said, there was one sitting out there this week. So, yeah. I have to get up on the desk so I can see down. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> So I don't know about changing coverage. I don't know who's first. I'm, I'm, I'm going go ahead, Randy. I have my sale right <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Randy. I'll make a motion to approve the 2022 contract for police services with the Marquette County Sheriff's Office at the rate of $50.38 an hour for 80 hours a week and authorize the township supervisor to sign the agreement. I'll second that. Okay, motion and support. Support. Attorney? No. You're good? All right, any other questions, comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And that is the budget that you were presented a week or two ago, whenever that was. So it's already in there. It's in the general fund budget. Correct. All right, one more. Consider approving superior paving quote for asphalt patches. Lenny's got that one. One more and then it's yep. Miller time, Lenny. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. Um, so these are just for some uh, patches from some prior work that we did uh, uh, over the year here. Uh, one's for a hydrant uh, at right near the uh, Bancroft lift station. Another one is for a sewer manhole uh, repair that we had made. And the third location is for a service line uh, repair at the Northwoods Apartments. Okay. Questions, Ernie? Ernie? Looking at the quote here, uh, it says the price does not include bonds, dues, permits, or testing, uh, plus modification and replacement of existing base material. Do we anticipate any of this happening? No, and these are just basically gonna be, like the one is uh, actually part of our driveway going into the lift station, and then it's, it's basically, even like in the, the road it's just for like driveways and like a parking lot type stuff okay. no bonds or permits that they'll have to worry about that, just, that no. we will have to worry about no okay Is that it? that's it for me uh, Randy I'll make a motion to approve the quote for a superior paving for asphalt patches in the amount not to exceed six thousand four hundred seventy five dollars support Okay, we have motion and support. Any other comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Thank you. You got it, Lenny. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you being on so long. Oh, no problem. All right, committee updates. Planning. Ms. Linda. Um, the planning committee met um, <clears throat> a couple weeks ago. And I am here to remind the public that um, we're having a public hearing tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on two parcels. One is a V B vacation rental by owner um, on Ontario Street, and the other is a three silo project across from the golf course. So that will be at 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. Thank you. Are you still Zooming, or are you just doing in person? In person. Okay. So I can't zoom in. <laughs> oh, I don't know that part. No, I don't think they're zooming. No, we're not. You'd have okay. to come. Yeah. Okay. Um, Recreation Committee did not meet tonight. Oh, really? That's correct. Huh. I was here. Yeah. Yeah. We will talk about how yeah. we can get that. You can take me off you. of it, okay? We can talk about it after. All right. Um, events committee. What are we doing there, Mr. L? Well, what we got going here is, uh, <clears throat> is the Christmas one coming up, and that's going to be on Tuesday, November 23rd. We have a light to treat the Christmas tree, and Santa's going to come. It's going to be at the Westwood Oak Mall. So that's our next event. Starting at that's 6 November 23rd. What time? 5.30, 6? Yeah, you'll get a poster on it. It's like, too early in the planning process to have that up. Oh, okay, yeah. so then we'll just have the date. Then. Yeah. yeah, I'll bring a poster for everybody and then it'll be advertised and stuff. Like that. Okay. We have a tree. Huh? We will have a tree. Any um, emails for uh, the public? No. Any questions? Okay. Um, announcements. Who's got anything to share? Anybody? Just a quick announcement, Lynn. I went to the uh, MTA summit last week and there were some pretty good classes on elections and running meetings and what you can buy legally and certain things but anyway um, just to report back that talking to a lot of the members of those townships and there was people from all the way from Adrian there so there a lot of traveling uh, townships came up to attend that in-person uh, training because we haven't had any in Two, almost two years so but anyway just to let the residents know talking to the other folks that I've was meeting down there and having lunch and dinner with this township is far and above doing things better than most so I just want to let the residents know that we are in actually pretty good shape compared to other uh, townships in the state as far as a lot of things we do so um, I just think uh, you know just just be proud of ourselves that we have that integrity and have the pride to do things that we do because we are in a lot better shape than others. Listening to the horror stories down there. I was going to say, any to share? You don't have to say. No, I'm not sharing any, but okay. Uh, but a lot of boards fight amongst themselves and have to have legal counsel intervene, which we don't have to have here most of the time. Clearly, <laughs> um, though. <laughs> but it's early. But anyway, we just do things the right way compared to some other townships in this state. So, Adrian's down by the Ohio border. Yep, there was the there was members there from Adrian. That's a long drive. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other announcements? Okay. Manager's report. <coughs> um. <coughs> Just to piggyback on what Clerk Rotari was just saying about the way we do things here in Marquette Township, I just wanted to mention that as your manager, I'm pleased that you will allow your staff the opportunity to consult with legal counsel whenever we feel it's necessary because it's very important that we get it right the first time as many times as we can to avoid far more costly issues down the road. Um, it's a breath of fresh air to be able to have that opportunity here. 
So thank you for that. Um, my report is really a summary of what you've already talked about this evening regarding our solid waste issues. We will really dive into that at the public works budget work session. Um, and like I said, there is a typo in there. I said one extra hour per day. It's actually two hours per day already. And they're anticipating it'll be more than that in the winter because the hydraulic mechanism that tips that cart doesn't like cold weather. Plus you have to wheel the carts through snow and slush and everything else. So you've heard that argument already tonight. We'll get you the rest of the information um, for that work session with some proposed cost cutting measures because we feel we need to get a better handle on what we're currently doing. As much as the programs we're providing are helping, we feel we can really tighten things up a little bit to save ourselves some money and, and reduce the amount of increase in that monthly garbage fee for our customers. I'll see if I can put something together on the bottom of that recycling sheet then that addresses some of what we talked about tonight. That's probably the best use of yeah. it. Yeah. The, the one thing I will say regarding the added hours, it's going to be tough to negotiate that up and down as we keep going forward. They took a few months to figure out what it's truly costing them and then came to us. So they've eaten the extra to this point. It's going to be tough to go back to them and say, well, can you reduce that to four hours a week or something like that? What we really can do, though, long term, is convince our customers, if your cart's not full and you can get another full week of recycling in that cart, don't put it out that week like you said already. Because it is going to save us long term. They won't have to come back again with another request before this contract expires. We need to get control of the way we're doing things now that we know what the impacts are. <clears throat> but, you know, the first Wednesday rubbish drop off, that's probably the single easiest way to get control of our costs. If you saw the list of people that have been using it, two neighborhoods jump, jump right out at us as the highest users. Good information. Um, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. That's not what we're here to do. I think it's great that they're using it. I just don't know if we can justify everyone paying for those two neighborhoods using it to the extent they are. So that's what you'll have to consider moving forward. <clears throat> are you talking about the brush? Nope. The first Wednesday refuse. No, also, we just added glass recycling right because it's not included in the curbside single stream so we're paying for another dumpster and the hauling costs the first Wednesday just for glass that's not in the current budget so all of these things that we're doing to meet the expectations of our customers come at a cost and we can't just eat everything so <clears throat> Everyone's got to be aware of what the true impacts are of the decisions that are being made and the expectations that the residents have on the township for these services. So if we have that discussion in a public meeting, we can make good decisions and I, I think we can get control of some of it. A lot of it's beyond our control, like the tipping fees. So um, that's really about it for this, this report. Any questions for the manager? I mean, I'm not looking for any specifics, but you say two neighborhoods. Is there ways to pinpoint down blocks and stuff that, that can possibly get contacted saying this is excessive, this is abusive? I um, think we just put limitations in place for everybody. Um, if, if you have two neighborhoods that are generating all the costs that the entire township is paying for, you limit to how them how much they use this, the service so everyone gets a chance to use it equally. You don't have the entire township paying for a very small percentage of the township. We had limitations on it, like one pickup load or one, mm -hmm. one uh, trailer load. Or, or that something. may have been the case at one time. It isn't any longer. It's not. Um, so that's probably going to be an easy discussion to have. Yeah. That, that was my understanding. I thought that was in place. 
Well, what you just said is probably what you're going to hear from us here at the next work session. Good. Okay. Are they bringing materials that shouldn't be brought? That well, that's the other thing. We, we didn't get a chance to talk to the building and grounds employees that are there. We don't want these people also bringing their curbside trash there either because now you're paying double. Right. The, garbage, the garbage contract is already paying for every, every customer we have. We're paying whether they put it out or not that week. That's the way the contract's written. So if we're paying for it to be picked up curbside and then they bring it on the first Wednesday because it's most convenient for them, we're paying double. So we'll need to put controls on what they're bringing in. This is for the stuff that North Country can't pick up curbside, right? right? It's the bulky stuff that won't go in the truck that'll only go in the dumpster. So people are gonna have to just be reminded that we have to put these controls in place so that their garbage fees aren't 25 bucks a month in two years. Because we're getting there quickly. Okay, so we'll get more information during the budget sessions. What else for the manager, anything? Okay, I lost my page. You want to review the motions, Randy? Certainly. The first motion was to approve the consent agenda, and that was approved. The second motion was to approve the regular agenda as presented, and that was approved. Third motion was to move 8A, which was the uh, North Country Disposal Request to 8A, and that was approved. The fourth motion was to approve the um, hours for North Country Disposal, and that was approved. The fifth motion was to uh, reschedule the budget work sessions for Wednesday, October 7th at 2. That'll be Public Works. And Wednesday, October 14th at 2, and that'll be a wrap-up session. And that was approved. The sixth motion was to approve the stormwater documents. That was approved. The seventh motion was to approve uh, Frank's appeal to the DDA, effective November 1. And that term will go through 1231 to 22. That was approved. The eighth motion was to approve the uh, 2022 contract for law enforcement services. That was approved. And the ninth motion was to approve superior paving quote for asphalt patches. And that was approved. Okay. Or Thursdays. You yeah. said Wednesdays. Thursdays. Thursdays. Okay. Correct. Thursdays. But 10 7 21 and 10 14 21 at okay. 2 o'clock. And those will be posted tomorrow okay. and on the website tomorrow. So I have added a couple of things for the next agenda on October 5th. We'll have a road committee appointment and we will have a presentation by our um, upset lieutenant. He will be here. So upset. Yep. And then anything else that comes up. Okay, I'm also going to put in yeah, that's in October. October 5th's agenda will also have the MTA a legislative policy platform for you to look at. And then the following meeting, the 17th or whatever of October, we'll either approve it or make changes. Okay, so you'll have a couple weeks to look at it and decide if you want to have them f address those legislative issues in Lansing 22. So I'll ha I have those three on the uh, um, agenda already. What board member comment do we have? Anything? Anybody want to share? No? We just need another motion then. I move to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That is 8.39. Remember our meeting's October 5th. That's picture.